In this video, I want to talk about some of the misconceptions that I had about dog training and what new strategies I've learned since I got Frosty. I've had Frosty for four months now, and I'm just now starting to understand how to best interact with him and how to motivate him. He's the first dog that I've ever trained, so before getting him, I did a bunch of research on dog training. The main strategy that I came across on YouTube was called balanced training, which is where you combine rewards for good behavior with corrections for bad behavior. I also kind of took for granted the theory that you should have a very dominance-based relationship with your dog where they should obey you all the time because you're the leader of the pack and all that stuff. My attempts at implementing those ideas got me bitten three times within the first week. Although he's a small dog and him biting me isn't incredibly dangerous to me, um, it still is not the behavior that we're looking for, right? So I started to get pretty discouraged and I met with several different types of trainers. And I noticed that out of all of them, the one who had the best interaction with Frosty um, was actually the all positive trainer. Now, I've always thought that all positive training where you don't use any punishments at all teaches the dog basically that they don't have to respect you and that they can do whatever they want, you know? Despite this assumption, I quickly saw that the strategies she was using with Frosty and the strategies that she gave me to use with him actually worked. So I've come to believe that I was very much wrong in my initial assumptions about all positive training. Now, I'm not saying that all positive training is the best kind or that it works for everyone, but I am saying that it does seem to be the best for this particular dog in this particular situation. So in this video, I want to reflect on three specific things that I've changed in my interactions with Frosty and how they've made him both safer and more obedient. The first thing is that I use a lot more treats. Frosty is highly food motivated, so once he realizes that Frosty, come, means, hey, I have a treat in my hand right here that you're about to get, he pretty much always runs up to me. It's true that there won't always be treats and that sometimes more exciting things will be vying for his attention, but that's where I think that the habit formation will come in. Once we've done this, you know, a thousand times, um, then hopefully his reaction to that command will become pretty automatic. Two, I stopped putting him in situations that he wasn't ready for. When I first took him to the park, for example, he was really stressed and overwhelmed and he didn't, he wouldn't even take treats for rewards. Um, so I kind of just had to realize that when he's in that state, he is what's called over a threshold. And the way that the vet explained this to me is that when he's in this state, he is not using his frontal lobe, which is the you know part of your brain that handles logic and all that. He's using his amygdala, which is basically instincts, just go off my gut reaction, don't think, just do. And when he's in the state, he's not going to learn. And so I kind of realized that introducing him into a new situation, I really just have to be patient and wait for him to at least adjust enough that he can start using his frontal lobe instead of his amygdala before I start expecting him to um, respond well to training. The last thing is that I really have to watch my tone with him. Frosty is very, very sensitive to emotion. And the second he hears any kind of frustration or anger in my tone, like he physically freezes, his ears go back kind of the side and he will not respond to anything. Even if I have a treat, he does not care. Um, now for the first couple of months when I needed him to come inside, for example, I would yell at him, tell him to come inside. And if he didn't immediately respond, I would just go out, put a leash on him and drag him inside. But now I'm noticing that if I um, just go out and approach him and talk nicely to him, don't yell at him, but say, hey, Frosty, come in. If he doesn't come in, go over to him, pet him, continue talking nicely to him, then he'll just follow me right inside. Um, it's very different, I've noticed, um, just based on how I call him. I've also noticed sometimes when I will call him inside, I'll call him inside a couple times, I'll be really frustrated. And then my boyfriend will come out and be like, hey, Frosty and he'll just come flying in the door. Um, so it really does make a huge difference with him, the tone of voice that you use and kind of the vibes that you're giving him. And I really noticed that he's way, 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 way more obedient um, when I'm giving him, you know, really good positive vibes versus, hey, do what I want now. These three realizations have helped immensely in controlling Frosty's behavior. Now we're still very early on in the process, so I don't yet know how these strategies are gonna hold up in the long term. But since I was able to adjust my mindset once when I realized that what I was doing wasn't working, I hope I'll be humble enough to do the same thing as I learn more about Frosty in the future.